Doing math is lonely. When my friends and family ask me about what I do, I can only ramble on about shapes and numbers, and they probably think that I sound crazy. As for strangers, they will either tell me that I'm smart or, God forbid, that they hated math in school. Yeah, thanks. So, why is math so lonely? I think that there are three big reasons. Hyperspecialization The amount of math we know has exploded in the past few centuries. We now know so much math that the very best mathematicians alive only know a tiny fraction of it. To get a rough feeling for how much math there is, you can take a look at the mathematics subject classification. It tries to list every branch of math out there, and as a result, it is 224 pages long. That's a lot of math. I recently solved a small open problem in combinatorics. The whole project took me about 100 hours of work, counting all the time I spent hitting dead ends trying to solve it, to when I finally had a breakthrough, and then to when I had to straighten out the gory details when writing up the paper, which really felt like cleaning up after a party. Despite all this effort, I'm pretty sure that only a literal handful of people in the world will ever read it. This is normal in math. You can have two mathematicians, both working in the same field, say algebraic geometry, yet they can be specialized in different subfields, where they don't understand each other's research. Many proofs are only understood by a small handful of people alive. To quote a mathematician, we work for the grudging approbation of a few friends. And this feeling of only a small handful of people understanding what it is that you devote your life to brings me to my second point. Esotericism What do I mean by esotericism? I mean it in the sense that math is a body of knowledge that is hard to understand as an outsider and that it takes a long time and a lot of work to become an insider. My good friend is a music student. He works hard and studies difficult theories about music that I can't follow. But he uses that esoteric knowledge to help him create music, and that music can be appreciated by anyone without any knowledge of the theory. This is not the case with pure math. Sometimes I feel like I have created a lovely song and I desperately want to share it with the people that I love, but to them, what I write on the page is just a soup of symbols. For others, their technique serves their art, but for us, our art is our technique. Even in nearby disciplines such as physics and computer science, we usually can still connect to the public in some way, because while techniques may be esoteric, the things that they are about are not. For example, the techniques of general relativity are abstract and alien to the public. But we can still appreciate the beauty of the night sky, and so we can form a connection on those grounds. But math can choose to cut its ties to the ground and float off into untethered abstraction, which is both its great blessing and curse. Math is esoteric even between professors and students. While a motivated undergraduate in many disciplines can essentially understand a professor's research in that discipline, this is rare in math. If you think of math as a language, it is so vast that much of undergrad is spent simply learning the words and basic phrases that form that language. It takes much more time and effort to glimpse the unity of mathematics and to understand that the different branches of math aren't as separate as one may have guessed. Which brings me to my third point. Most people just don't get it. Math is hard. By nature, math is just a difficult thing for human minds to think about. And it really doesn't help that math doesn't have the best reputation in our culture. Part of that is because teaching could be a lot better for many reasons. For one, Math is often taught like how to read music scores without ever playing the music. We practice writing down notes and scales and are tested on chords, all without ever hearing what it sounds like. Because playing the music is for grown-ups, and we are just not experienced enough. 
a lot of road practice and drills happen because, above all, students have to pass exams. But when a measure becomes a target, and when it becomes the highest goal, the pursuit of all other goals, including learning, suffers. Poor teaching produces future teachers who also can't convey important intuitions. Technical details end up getting emphasized over big picture ideas, which is part of the reason why Tree Blue One Brown is so popular, and rightfully so. Lectures are really old fashioned these days, and animation and interaction have tremendous potential in education. On the flip side, the fact that math attracts really smart people can also be a problem too. When someone understands something way too easily, they can often have a hard time teaching weaker students, since they simply cannot relate to why those students are struggling. And it doesn't help that many professors are incentivized to care more about research than teaching, and that many universities don't care enough about passionate educators without good research outputs. So what can we do? Well, so far I've given you quite an unbalanced picture. At the end of the day, math is a human endeavor. We do math because we want to understand math and to share that understanding with others. Math is not some stoic and machine-like enterprise. We are afflicted with the usual human fashions, faiths, and fantasies, although perhaps slightly less than in other disciplines. And any human endeavor has community. Collaborations are much more common in math these days, where much of the most interesting work is done when two hyper-specialists build a bridge between their specializations. We can choose to be more social about research, to share ideas more openly, and to encourage even more collaboration. There is much joy in learning or sharing what we are working on with fellow students or colleagues, and it's immensely rewarding to teach someone less experienced than you and to make a genuine impact on their life. Communities live and die by our individual efforts. If all of human knowledge, everything that's known, is believed to be an enormous hierarchic structure, then the high country of the mind is found at the uppermost reaches of this structure, in the most general, the most abstract considerations of all. Few people travel here. There's no real profit to be made from wandering through it. Yet, like this high country of the material world all around us, it has its own austere beauty that to some people make the hardships of traveling through it seem worthwhile. Robert Persig, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance In math, we mostly travel alone through the high ranges of human thought. But every now and then, we stumble upon a fellow explorer, and we make a new friend. Sometimes we must learn to be alone, so that we can come across those ideas that can only form in the stillness of solitude, and then return to the world to share and reintegrate our discoveries to enrich the human endeavor. And that capacity to be alone only serves to enrich those relationships we have with others. Thanks for watching.